Hello, we're at CES 2016 in Las Vegas and we have a chance to catch up with AltaCast and Bill Helms who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Architect of AltaCast. So Bill, I understand that with this show you're introducing another iteration of your UI template, uh, AltiView 3. Correct. And, and uh, that it has some additional functionalities beyond what you've had before, and it's also characterized to work and take advantage of the UHD screen environment. With AltiView 3, um, this is our next generation user experience. And in the past, you know, as we've went from AltiView 1 to AltiView 2, we've incorporated new concepts into, uh, into the user experience that an operator can provide. And, and we've done both, you know, ones where it's one complete user experience that the consumer, uh, that the operator can, can gather and, and provide to the consumer, or they can take individual concepts. And what we've done here is we're, we're introducing AltiView 3, and, and really the collection of functionality that's present in AltiView 3 to start uh, associating content that the operator has and that they're providing to their subscriber and give that consumer uh, not only a better way of discovering it, but also a better way for the operator to associate their content with that consumer, not only as their subscriber, but that consumer as a total person. And there are other parts of their lifestyle, other, other media they, they uh, uh, participate with, as well as other things that are going on in their life. And, and to take that and relate that to the operator's content and build a closer bond between them. And they could be mixed and matched in different ways. Okay. Well, so. why don't you show us a little bit about what AltiView 3 is all about? I'd be happy to. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. So thank you. We'd like to introduce our, our uh, next generation uh, user experience that we call AltiView 3. First thing we'd like to, sh to talk about is that what we're showing this on is uh, uh, UHD. So it has a greater in uh, increase of resolution, which allows us to put more on the screen because we have finer detail. Now, uh, this is not uh, necessarily only have to be UHD, but it, it, it makes it nice that we can show a lot of concepts on the screen in a much more crisper manner. So we're starting at the first part here, what we're showing is live television. Um, and in this case, it's sports content. And we're seeing the details of the sports content. In addition to that, uh, if you think about it, it's a, it's a, a mosaic of other sports content uh, that's available here. So the association was, you're watching sports, I will show you other sports information, um, and the the information how you how uh, uh, we may present this mosaic, the technology behind it can vary depending upon the actual operator's network. So it could be a separate mosaic video stream, it could be a collection of tuners that are available in the box. It could be implemented a lot of different ways. The key concept is I'm showing you related content to what you're seeing on the screen. I think everyone's pretty familiar with this concept. Then we go to the next sort of stage of I'm still watching live TV, but what I'm showing you here now is, is the popularity of the actual content that's being shown at the exact same time. So I can see right now that, you know, 20% of, of the uh, viewership and that definition of the viewership could be as small or as large as you want, right? It could be a national viewership, it could be your local viewership, uh, but we can show what's the most popular content and allow the viewers to select from there. As we go into the next section here, um, what we'd like to show is uh, building on top of that and, and showing things that I think people are generally familiar with, but perhaps a different way to see it, right? Which is, what are the genres? What are the things that are people watching? So I can bring up a particular movie like Lucy. I can look at those uh, uh, related elements or other shows. And I, as an operator, I can preposition, you know, other content that I would like to see associated with this, or, I'm, or I'd like to encourage people to watch a new movie that might be released. So this content could be related in different ways. Now I look at you as an individual consumer. So this is your video shelf, right? So these are videos you have either uh, are, are recently watched or, or TV series you've recently watched. And if we go back to the, the, the top part there where we look at, um, a, a, as you saw it come across, is profiles right so I can I can identify an individual user I can identify a collection of users I can look at their own material content whether that's off the PC their local media or off of other cloud services that may be available and then I can build essentially here is your 
video shelf of things that you either would like to watch, you've recently watched, or we think would be things you'd be interested in. And on top of that, I will provide to you, you know, whatever user, your own local content that, that could be available on the network. Another interesting way of looking how content relates to this particular consumer is, is a timeline. So for example, you know, the, the one I think where a lot of us are familiar with is you want to see what's on now. So we give you some options here. You can look at uh, shows you may want to catch up on, series that you, you know, haven't watched for a few weeks and you may need to catch up on the episodes. We can show you recordings that you've previously made. Uh, or we could talk about uh, new videos or new uh, VOD or, or series that are coming, uh, coming soon. I think people are familiar with that sort of, here's what's on, here's what you've recorded, here's what's next. But we give you a couple of other interesting views. One is we can show you what you've watched before. So you can scroll back to yesterday and you can see that these are the live events that, or the live TV shows you've watched. Here are recordings off your DVR or off your network DVR that you've watched. Music that you listen to, photos that you watch, movies that you watch. In addition to that, we can collect data over periods of time and then provide more useful information to the consumer that, hey, you know, 30% of the time you watch thriller movies over the last two weeks. So it's a way of guiding the consumer and giving them feedback that you understand what they do, what they're watching and how they're interacting with your service. Another interesting aspect that we see and that we see a lot of value in is how do I draw relationships between the operator's content and what the consumer is doing in their real life? So for example, let's say you've, uh, you've recently been to London, you've uploaded photos, that information is available within the photos of you know, the GPS coordinates on the photos, various ways of getting the information. You could then take that, that single piece of metadata that this consumer has been to London recently and say, you know, maybe they would be interested in, in, in content that is related to London or to England or to you know, Great Britain in general. Uh, it, it allows you to draw connections between what the consumer does in real life and what the content that they're watching. I would assume that going forward now with the multi-screen environment being what it is and uh, the competition to, for eyeballs and retention and all those things, that, that this, this level of personalization and the user interface is now going to become table stakes. So we'll be very interested in seeing how this rolls out as, uh, as the year ensues and beyond. Thank Absolutely. you very much, Bill, for taking You're the welcome. time to tell us about it. Thank you for coming by. Okay. Thank you for coming by.